in the deepest eons of history, before mankind had even emerged from primordial ooze, the Necrontier dominated the galaxy. But unity receded, even as the bounds of their domain expanded. Fearing the collapse of their civilization, the leaders of the Necrontier assailed the Old Ones, seeking to wrest from them the secret of eternal life. The galaxy blazed with the fires of war. Too late, the Necrontier realized the impossibility of victory. Thus, they embraced damnation. The Star Gods, the Catan, walked amongst them, offering prized immortality and long-sought victory. So ended the Necrontier of old. Betrayed by the ambition of Zarek, the Silent King, they were dragged in chains to the fires of biotransference, transmuted from fragile and radiation-cursed bodies to forms more suited for the ravages of war. Stripped of flesh, of mortality, even of their souls, the Necrontier passed from history. Only the Necrons remained. Now enslaved to the will of the Catan, the Necrons at last altered the course of the war. Cosmic battle lines buckled and at last broke beneath a tide of immortal fury. As the last of the Old Ones fell, Zarek led what remained of his people in revolt against their Catan masters. The Star Gods were overthrown, shattered into shards and forced to serve those they had once ruled. But centuries of war had taken their toll on both the Necrons and the galaxy. To preserve what remained of their empire, the Necrons retreated to colossal stasis tombs to sleep away millennia while their domain healed and their rivals passed into dust. Freed from the shackles of time, the passing millennia meant nothing to them. Sixty million years have passed, and the ancient tombs are once more stirring to life. The Necrons, forgotten by all but the Eldari, are returning to claim what was theirs. They will abide no trespassers. With the awakening of their Therion, Kefrek the Unbroken, the Neferu dynasty arises once more. Undying legions stir in the forgotten dirt of a hundred worlds. The reconquest of the galaxy has begun. Oh, Mark. Let the legions die. Oh, Mark. Unleash the power of the Neferu. Our worlds are infested. Scour them clean. This is my hour. The time has come for the might of the Neverum to be felt once again, my son. Our ancient domain is infested with primitives. You are to scour them from my sight. As you command, so shall it be, Great One. The Adeptus Mechanicus fleet is drawing close to the Northern Pole. They are close to discovering our tombs. Are we detected? No. Their sensors are focused on the surface. Excellent. Engage silent running. Let them remain blind until it is too late. We are under attack. Postulate theory. Necron ambush. Acknowledged. Assistance required. Confirmed. Reinforcements dispatched. Arrival imminent.
You have delivered the lessons in respect and caution this day. And if those lessons are not taken to heart, all who oppose my will shall perish. Indeed, the recent awakenings have drawn mankind's restless eye. The servants of the formless horror will not be far behind. We shall be ready. Indeed, I cede command of a new feat to aid your purpose. The boundaries of this sector chafe at me. Is it proper that an eminence such as mine be thus confined? It is not, great one. Then we are of one mind. Reclaim the neighboring Golden Gate, so that distant worlds might come to know my greatness. It shall be as you command. Tread carefully, Nemesaur. So forthright a move is likely to draw the gaze in the Andari. Do you question our Pharaoh's command? I may cancel caution. Arrogance is a poor shield. I cannot defy the Great One. His will is supreme. As you wish, Nemesaur. As you wish. Ten thousand years have passed since the galaxy burned in the fires of the Horus heresy. Ten millennia since the greatest of the Emperor's Primarchs fell into the grasp of eternal damnation and tore the galaxy asunder. Horus Lupercal may be dead, his body ashes and his memory the stuff of a cursed legend. But the wounds he wrought yet gape in the hide of an embattled Imperium. For the battle against Chaos knows no end. Many of Horus' servants survived the civil wars, and they have not forgotten their defeat. When the War Master fell, they retreated to the Eye of Terror and waged battle anew. Greatest of these was Abaddon the Despoiler, Horus' greatest living heir. Abaddon took the title of War Master for his own and embarked upon a long and bloody campaign to succeed where his fallen master had failed. Twelve Black Crusades he launched against the Imperium of Man. Twelve world-shattering campaigns to forever alter the balance of power. Now, as the Millennium draws to a close, a vast armada of traitors slips its moorings as Abaddon launches his 13th and perhaps final strike. As the tide of chaos breaks against the Cadian Gate, the Imperium holds its breath. Faith alone cannot hold back these bleak waters. Only valor will serve. serve as your vessel, Great One. Yet, I have some concern that reawakening the Dolmen Gate will have drawn the gaze of the Aldari. If the Aldari are alerted to our presence, it is due to your actions, not my command. Of course, Great One. I did not mean to imply otherwise. Deathless abhorrence. We know your intent. We know your purpose. We will find you, and your curse shall be lifted from this region. Greetings, esteemed foe. Rejoice, for we shall meet you in battle as protocol demands. And you shall be scattered across the stars for your presumption. I bring dire tidings, Nemesaur. Our outposts register Aldari fleets in increasing number. Do tell, Tsar. 
I would never have guessed without your bountiful insight. The Eldari are indeed roused, as you predicted. The Pharon will hold me accountable for this. Unless you put an end to the incursions before he orders you to do so. Victory forgives all transgressions. Indeed. But it is Kefrek's forgiveness that concerns me most. It has come to my notice that you have repelled an Aldari incursion without instruction. I thought it best, Great One. I did not wish to trouble you with such matters. I see. Have a care as your initiative does not become a spur to excessive pride. Naturally not, Great One. And yet, you have served me well. Thus, I grant you a further decree of plenty. Use it well. Of course, Great One. Today, you are rewarded. But what of tomorrow? The region of space now known as the Eye of Terror was once home to the Eldari Empire. A prideful, sensuous people, the Eldari realized too late the perils of excess. The fourth chaos god, Slanish, was born from their debauchery, its coming heralded by a psychic scream that shook real space to its foundations and devastated the Eldari. The Crone Worlds are all that remain of the Eldari's fallen domain. They are blighted planets, consumed by the spreading unreality of the Eye of Terror, and twisted to new and nightmarish realities. Though the Crone Worlds are overrun by the servants of the Dark Gods, the Eldari have not entirely abandoned them. They cannot, for only here can the treasured Spirit Stones be harvested and thus the souls of the dying be saved from thirsting slanish. Such expeditions are fraught with peril, for there are few more dangerous places amongst the stars. Many who seek the Crone Worlds do not return. The Eldari have never recovered from the horrors of the Fall. They are a fractured, dwindling population on the brink of extinction. Most dwell aboard star-treading craft worlds, honing their peerless minds along the disciplined paths in the hope of staving off the perils of decadence and thus preventing a second, final catastrophe. But not all Eldari can bear the rigidity of craft world life. Some depart their homes, seeking adventure amongst the stars as corsairs. Such lives are fraught with danger, but are also rich with excitement these outcasts can be found in every corner of the galaxy, blazing a brief but exhilarating trail before madness claims them. The Drakari too live outside the structures of the Eldari path. Corrupt and cruel, they keep Slanish at bay, not with discipline and spirit stones, but by feasting on the torment of others. Raiders and slavers all, the Drakari are a blight upon the galaxy, as selfish as they are sadistic, as untrustworthy as they are cunning. But in recent days, the barriers between the Eldari factions have begun to crumble, with ever more gathering beneath the banner of one named Ivrain. These Inari keep their beliefs hidden, as hidden as their intentions. Should they be encountered on the battlefield, caution will serve you well. With the Eldari intrusion so masterfully contained, I would have you turn your eye to different horizons. With the greatest respect, Great One. It is only a matter of time before the Eldari return. I will not have my wisdom questioned by a groveling cryptic. You will remain silent. I stand ready to obey your will, Great One. Have you heard of the vagabond Trazin? I know he is a thief. 
unworthy of your mention. Indeed. To this day, the thief has uncovered something of great value to the Neferu. We must meet his price in trade. Trazin is a collector. You will acquire for him a sought-after specimen. Segle Khan of the Human Warriors designated the White's Guard. Do not fail me. Honored foe, we come in need. Not out of desire for bloodshed. Surrender yourself, and your followers will be spared. Necrons, here. By the pyres of Kum Karta, you'll have nothing from me. Incorrect. A pity he is so selfish. The unascended are often so. desire to fight on. Hardly unexpected, Nemesaur. Pride is a spur to foolishness. I recommend you protect the capture ship. It would be a shame to lose Trezin's prize. The Imperium of Man. A galaxy-spanning empire in decline. Once, humanity stood on the brink of taming the stars. A golden age of light and glory beckoned. But men have ever been prone to temptation and lured to stubborn pride. Now the Space Marines, intended as the vanguard of mankind's ascension, fight ceaselessly to prevent their father's work sliding into ruin. The Adeptus Mechanicus, custodians of wondrous technology, take to the stars in hope of unearthing lost secrets from the very darkest of ages, and to impose the Omnissiah's will upon a scattered galaxy. But nowhere is the Imperium's might more plainly seen than in the vessels of its star-spanning navy. As war rages, colossal warships slip anchor to smite the foe with the righteous fury of the faithful. Such vessels are both Imperium's stalwart shield and gleaming spear, shining in the impenetrable dark of space. It takes more than a man to command such a warship. It takes a hero, strong in will and unflinching of purpose. Without such heroes, the Emperor's light would surely wane. Admiral Spire is one such hero. Forged in the hallways of the vaunted Scola Progenium, tempered in the cursed days of Abaddon's 12th Black Crusade. Long has he been lost, but now, freed from the Immaterium's clutches, he returns to shed his blood in the Emperor's cause once more. Any who seek to sweep mankind from the stars must first reckon with Spire. Many have sought his head. All have failed.
But one hero alone may not be enough to change the Imperium's fortunes. It will take thousands, even millions, for mankind to reclaim its footing in the Eye of Terror's gaping maw. And millions more to hold it. Such a task will not be easy. Cadia is demon-hunted rubble, and the Imperium itself is scarred, torn in two by the Cicatrix Maledictum. But it is the nature of heroes to triumph in adversity, and of faith to flourish in the dark. Is the specimen secure? Sealed deep with a Tesseract Labyrinth. Is in pristine condition. Perfect for Trazin's collection. Good. Kefrek will be pleased. Perhaps. Dealing with Trazin is seldom a smooth course. So, Kefrek, my thanks for the amusing trifle. I know just the gallery in which to place him. I have upheld my end of the bargain. It is now for you to uphold yours. Where is my trionic activator? I do not have him. Charlatan! You have betrayed the divine will of Kefrith the Unbroken, Farrell of Neferu. I shall see you disintegrating for this. Don't be tedious, Kefrith. I don't have it, but I do know where it can be found. I never promised to place the thing in your hand. It is aboard the human vessel designate Farrell's. I recently had the opportunity to have a look around. You need only reclaim it. Very well. But you shall remain here as my guest. I would not want there to be any misunderstandings. Your guest? Well, I can hardly refuse. Not with all these guards. I mean, servants so close to hand. Never saw a lock. I leave it to you to replace the Trionic Activator. Take Trazin with you. If the Activator is not present on Valence, destroy him. If it is, destroy the human vessel once it has been acquired. Of course, Great One. This device, what function does it serve? It is to be the cornerstone of my glorious triumph. More than that, you do not need to know. This is a suicide mission. The Phalanx is no defenseless scow. We will find a way. Otherwise, if the Phalanx does not kill us, Kefrek surely will. Your fate hangs on our retrieval of the Trionic Activator. I think I'm insulted. Of course it's there, buried away in a relic chamber, overlooked and unloved. Deplorably, the Phalanx shields are strong. It will take an age to breach them, even with our strongest weaponry. I concur. Prepare the invasion cohorts. We will take the fight to the Phalanx's depths. The thickest hide is no defense when the strike falls from within. It would appear the Phalanx has no escort. They must think us fools to fall for so obvious a ploy. Or perhaps... Solar eruptions are imminent. Do they fear the effects? Naturally, our vessels will suffer no harm from such events. It is well this is so. The Phalanx will surely not emerge unscathed from a star's embrace. It is a weakness we can exploit. You have White Scar's blood on your hands, Necron. You owe the Imperium a debt. I thank you for granting me the opportunity to collect on it. I take no pleasure in my actions against your Imperium. 
But you are insects, crawling across a galaxy far beyond your comprehension. If you must be crushed for our betterment, then so be it. Fine words, but any conqueror would say the same. Indeed, they would. But my fine words are all the solace I have to offer. The will of Kefrek will not be gainsaid. Casualties reported throughout the central structure. Impossible! No! Muster all forces. Repel the borders. The main armory is already overrun. Three border fortresses have already fallen. We may have to abandon ship. This cannot be. The phalanx has endured for millennia. It cannot fail now, not under my command. We just lost another bulwark fortress. We have Tyranid sightings in the primary reactor chamber. What are your orders, Captain? Bionic 
activator is in our hands. Excellent. Instruct the Canoptic servitors to return our vessel to full function. Traitor. Deceiver. Charlatan. Great one. Trotin has escaped. Return him to me. I will see him drag through the colonnades behind my Imperial bars for this. Zah, does your foresight yield any clue as to where Trasin can be found? The skeins part unwillingly, swirled by the machinations of the formless horror. But I have him. An asteroid belt in the Vorapt system. The one named Medusa by the humans. Never saw Amok. I trust it would be too much to hope this is merely an escort from the Neferu domain. You have trespassed upon the trust of his glorious majesty, Kefrek the Unbroken. I am to bring you before him. Never the servant. And yet, you know nothing of his purpose, do you? He seeks only the Neferu restored. He is a selfish old fool. He will use the Dark Throne as a fortress in which to cower. He does not see its broader purpose. I have heard of the Dark Throne. I thought it lost. Not lost. Hidden. By Kefrek. It needed only one piece to begin the process of awakening. The Trionic Activator. You see, already you prove yourself a better candidate for ruler. The Activator does more than set the Dark Throne afire. It attunes it to the flow of the Immaterium. Its architect designed it to replace the Cadian Pylons with something more... lasting. It still can, if you are willing to lead in Kefrek's stead. What you suggest is the deepest treachery. Only to those without imagination. You should consider his words, Nemesaur. We both know that Kefrek's service leads only to disintegration. It's no concern of mine. All I ask is that you let me depart. Go. You see? You can make a decision if called to it. It is done, my loyal servant. Where is Trezin? I have humiliations to obey. He is destroyed, Great One. He would not be taken intact. You have failed me this day, Nemesaur. I shall not forget it. No, Great One. Return to me. We have much work ahead of us. Your time is running short, Nemesaur. This engagement successful. I trust you have had time to reflect upon your errors, Nemesaur. I have, Great One. Should we not use the Dark Throne for its original purpose? To contain the formless horror? You know. Worse, you question my flawless design. You overreach, Nevasaur. Surrender yourself for judgment. You no longer have any choice. You must depose Kefrek, or face disintegration. I have never sought to rule. Perhaps that is why you must accept its burden. Almighty Kefrek demands you hand yourself over for judgment, Amarco. To submit is folly. I am aware of this. Kefrek leads us all into ruin, Vorek. We must follow another path. His will must be obeyed. Surrender, or be destroyed. I will not surrender. I will never surrender. Plasma storms are rife in this region. I recommend you avoid the gas. Explosions will follow. Understood. 
It shall be done. Enemy orbital platform silence. Responsibility of my station. I assume rule of the Neferu. Deceiver! Betray! I now see you have been working against me from the start. Not so. I have sought only to. Lies! I shall see you destroyed for this. You and all who follow. Suggestion. So this is the Dark Throne. The wonders of Lost Age restored. Or nearly so. The process of reawakening is long and arduous. It must be protected from the Eldari until capable of defending itself. How do the Eldari know of its existence? I have no proof they do as yet. But it is never wise to underestimate the Eldari. Their memories are long, and their pride easily tarnished. We shall not wait for them. Such was Kefrek's manner of war. We must locate their main webway gate. Cease your approach, soulless one. We know of your intention, and it will not be tolerated. Esteemed foe, we seek no reprise of ancient war. Our labors will benefit all. There is no truth in your kind, and never has been. You will not pass. I regret that we shall. I am burdened by purpose. If you will not stand aside, you will be annihilated. Then come, face our cannons. Great one, there can be no assault on the Webway Gate until the Eldari fleet is destroyed. I am well aware of this, Zar. See how I stretch out my hand to brush them aside. Have a care that you do not entangle your fingers in the plasmic. You say, Great One. They are volatile beasts, and I 
Destruction. It is my pleasure to inform you that our destruction of the Webway Gate has yielded both disappointment and the possibility of glorious achievement. Explain. The Webway Gate's destruction has not slowed the Eldari efforts as much as we might have wished. However, your tireless advisors, of whom I am but the most eminent, Believe they can locate the craft world serving as the Eldari staging post. Order the Tesseract vaults unsealed. For prey of this stature, we require the power of a Catan. An intriguing prospect, Great One. Do you intend we should set one loose aboard Ostara? No. We will detonate its energies in the heart of the craft world. The resulting dimensional rift should see Ostara destroyed. A most excellent and elegant plan, Great One. I shall make the preparations. There can be no forgiveness for what you attempt today, soulless one. Not even should a hundred millennia fall away into the past. Esteemed foe. I regret that your forgiveness matters nothing to me. My dynasty's survival supersedes your own. And we shall fall upon you without mercy. Our gathered wrath shall scour you from the heavens. Your wrath matters to me even less than your forgiveness. Zar, is Cleorek's fleet prepared? So he reports. The transcendent Catan's shackles are being removed as we speak. The explosion should be... memorable. Eldari vessels are moving to engagement range. Calm yourself, sir. One does not undertake the destruction of a people without bloodshed. Yeah. 
Achieved much today, Amakun. So ends Craft World Ostara, sunk by the arrogance of its creators. No more distractions. Bring our vessels to readiness and focus all efforts on completing the Dark Throne's reawakening. As you command, Great One. With the Eldari tamed, I can begin preparations to translocate the Dark Throne through the Wetway. It is not too vast to be transported thus. Ordinarily, Exodus, but with unfettered access to the Cadian system, I can deploy a device to enlarge the passageway for a brief voyage, though this will not be without consequence. The method will wreak catastrophe upon the Wetway spur. An acceptable price for alacrity. I concur, Great One. Orcs are amongst the deadliest of the Xenos races. Multitudinous, belligerent, and possessed of brutal cunning, they spread across the stars like a green tide. Even in the war-riven sectors around the Eye of Terror, forever beset by chaos, they rank amongst the greatest threats. As battle raged between the Imperium and the dread forces of chaos, 
the orcs gained a foothold upon ravaged worlds, using them as staging areas from which they could slingshot deeper into Imperial territory. Orc technology is ramshackle, but terrifyingly effective, combining mismatched components, scavenged gear, and intuitive leaps to forge weapon systems whose inner workings baffle the most experienced of the Imperium's adepts, but lack for nothing in sheer unbridled firepower. In much the same way, an Orc Warlord can take a multitude of squabbling clans and forge them into an unstoppable army. Such a war has the sheer unbridled might necessary to conquer the stars themselves, leaving naught but rubble in its wake. As its momentum grows, so do its numbers grow, swollen by green skins drawn to the promise of bloodlust, teeth and loot. Ever a pestilence. They have too great a foothold already. Steps must be taken. Do you have a plan? I do. We will trace the roots back to their source and scour them from the stars. Excellence. Examination of the Orc vessels, if such a term fits these primitive hulks, suggests an origin point in the system known as Mordax Prime. Are we able to bring sufficient might to bear so far from our heartlands? Why, yes. We can strike whenever you think proper. Prime, such as what remains of it, is under our control. And the war boss? Absent. I have contracted death marks to seek him out. Unnecessary. He will return. Our presence in his former lair will prove an undeniable challenge. Oi! You team scouts got some front coming here! Rage all you wish, brute. I am not. I'm gonna crush you to scrap, then pound what's left, till it's no use to no one but the grots! By all means try. We are ready for you. Alright lads! Time to show them tin scales who's the strongest! Oi, Gospitter! Why aren't you ready in the fight? What? I let you snatch all the loot? This wasn't the plan! Was my plan? Oi, watch your fire, lousy crop! Don't wanna get it! Then stay out of my way! That's enough out of you! I'm gonna crush you once and for all! Yeah? You a war army! This one! Let's... let's put this grot in its place! Remarkable. They quarrel in the face of oblivion. No matter. We I will destroy them all. As you command.
Green Skin threat that was masterfully disposed of, if I may say so. Such vigorous fellows. But even vigor fades when faced with eternity. A satisfactory outcome. Leaderless, the Orcs will be no threat for some time to come. Perhaps I should set loose the flayed ones, just to be entirely certain. An Admiral's suggestions are, see that it is done. Hail, a Marken of the Neveru. Anakale, what would the Temerin dynasty have of me? Our war is not so long in the past that I welcome you. I invoke the Protocol of Concorda. We require your assistance. A most unexpected development. Proceed. The Temerin Core worlds are invaded. We stand upon the brink of destruction. I am authorized to offer fealty in exchange for aid. A generous offer, or a desperate one. And this invader of which you speak? The Great Devourer. Those known to others as the Tyranids. We have fleets mustering across this region. shall be yours to command. The Tyranids. The Great Devourer. In all the stars, there has never been a Xenos race more inimical to the survival of mankind. Indeed, they are the bane of all other life. Their origins are but poorly understood. The stuff of rumor and supposition and nightmare. The adepts of Mars believe that a single unknowable consciousness guides the high fleets about their voracious purpose. This consciousness knows only unquenchable hunger. Hive ships serve as synapse nodes, spreading the influence of the Tyranid hive mind across the stars. Such is the hive mind's suffocating will that the warp is distorted for light years around. Confusion and terror spread before the hive fleets advance as dreams darken and madness spreads. As the High Fleets advance, the suffocating embrace quenches the Emperor's light and drowns doomed worlds in psychic shadow. But the greatest threat comes from within. Foul creatures known as gene stealers infiltrate unvigilant worlds. A patriarch arises from the population's subverted flesh and projects a psychic beacon to draw the hive fleet ever closer. As the gene stealer cult grows in power, they emerge from the shadows of their benighted world. Civil war rages, shaking the planet asunder. Then the skies darken with spores and the high fleet's voracious tendrils. The cultists exult at the fulfillment of prophecy and their ascension into the light. Their delusions die with them. There are many high fleets, each but a facet of the immeasurable Tyranid threat. Leviathan is the greatest and has wrought ruin on a scale never before witnessed. 
Though the great rift arising from Cadia's ruin has severed many of Leviathan's tendrils, many more remain. Even now, one is surging towards the Eye of Terror. Excellence, I have divined the location of the Tyranid nodal beast. This ancient one should be eliminated with haste. At last. Transfer the coordinates to my tomb ship. I will lead the assault in person. Your example brings honor to the Neferu, excellent. We have arrived at a most opportune moment. The Ancient One is deep in its eating cycle. A revolting process. Even by the standards of flesh. Agree. But you should not waste this moment. Attack without delay before the beast rouses. It shall be as you say. shall be purged. All trace shall be scoured from our domain. Our outposts report increased contact with human vessels, Great One. The tenacity of these humans is to be respected. Though their losses are heavy, still they seek our destruction. A Markham, Pharaoh of Neferu. You have risen far since our last encounter. Trazin, what is it you want? I am minded to repay a debt. I loathe owing anyone anything. I see. And what do you offer? The Imperium's fleet. At a time and location to your advantage. Is that of interest? With the humans eliminated, Perhaps you can succeed where they have failed. That depends upon the price. No price. As I said, I loathe debts. The humans have a tendency to trust too easily. It shouldn't take much to send them into your waiting jaws. I will contact you again. What is he up to now, I wonder? Do you not trust him? I do not know. Great. 
Typhon. I am pleased to inform you that the Imperium Admiral Spire is preparing an assault upon the Dark Throne. What? How did he learn of its location? How do you think? I may have let it slip in an unguarded moment. At a time and location to your advantage. Remember, you place all our plans at risk. If this goes ill, you will require sanctuary from my retribution. Gratitude. Always in such short supply. Don't you have a battle to prepare for? Great One, Spire's fleet has entered our heartlands. You must take action. That upstart Trazin. He jeopardizes everything. Why? Likely he stands to profit regardless of outcome. That is his way. Yet there is still opportunity here if you seize it. Very well. Deploy the fleet. Eat. Great one, I bring entertaining news. I have defeated the encryption protocols currently favored by the Imperium. A facile task, but amusing all the same. Are they aware of this? They are deaf, blind, and riven with stupidity. Witness. Commodore Cage needs more time to calculate ideal bombardment zones. We'll buy that time by assaulting the defense platforms with as many vessels as can be spared. Captain Solari, I request your support in this matter. Agreed. Captain Donatos. Protect the starboard flank. I'm no stranger to this, Admiral. I will command the reserve. If there's an opening, I will strike and I will end this. So unfortunate we can hear their every word. Indeed. Shall I give the order to me? At once. And inform me the moment the Tremor Cannon is ready to fire. Bombardment zone calculations complete. Relaying now. This is Admiral Spire to attack fleet. Prioritize destruction of the Tremor Cannon, or this assault will be a martyr's cause, not a victory. Sir, I have identified their intended targets, Great One. We cannot let their vessels get into position. Any that do must be destroyed before firing commences. The Dark Throne is resilient, but it is not indestructible. I serve your glory.
place my forces at your command, Admiral Spire. And I am glad to receive them. The misguided scholars of Mars seeks to win the battle with the aid of Bruins. For which we should be grateful. I serve your glory. Another 
a great victory for the Neferu. You are to be congratulated, great one. I am not deceived. We have done only as you wished, not what we would have wished for ourselves. No matter where I go, I never lack for suspicious minds to accompany me. I wonder why that could be. You wound me, Kretek, and after I donated so generously to your cause. It would appear Spire was not our only threat. The newly returned Primarch, Rabute Gilliman, has seized command of the Imperium's defenders. This was not unexpected. Where are his forces gathering? Belial IV, Great One. Amidst the ruins of the Eldari Empire. How fitting. One great defeat begets another. I have the Imperial communications compromised for your pleasure, Great One. Good, sir. Let me hear. Necron vessels inbound. We are moving to support. Defend the station at all costs. The Lord Primarch has promised aid, but there is no guarantee when he will arrive. Primarch, Tsar? Their leader, Great One. Like them, but taller, I understand. Not to be underestimated. Ready to start. thought I'd serve as herald to an ultramarine, but these are strange times. Be of cheer, sons of Ultramar, for Engir Krakadum has come. My doom-laden fist shall have to serve until the Lord Primarch arrives. Not given to punctuality, this Lord Primarch. A faith in the flesh.
signs indicate that the Lord Primarch has finally arrived. Hail, warriors of the Imperium! Stand firm in adversity, for Robute Gilliman stands with you this day! Steel yourselves for battle, and we shall drive the invaders from this world. The Iron Hands will never yield. Their flesh is weak. Now, this one has promise. Perhaps we should leave him for last. A passing fancy tsar. Let them perish in the world most potent. So long as they perish. defeat has crippled the Imperium's ability to make war in this region. I estimate it will be many decades before they can re-establish a formidable presence. Excellent. They will no longer interfere with our plans. By the time the Imperium is ready to reclaim this region, it will be fortified beyond their ability to retake it. Great One. The Dark Throne brims with power. It will soon be ready, but there is a complication. What are your bad tidings, Tsar? There are troublesome influences at work in the webway. Agents of the formless horror, the Thousand Suns, are working to end our control of its passageways. Then we must give these meddlers other challenges of greater concern. 
Indeed, Great One. I suggest a direct assault on the homeworld, Sortiarius. That is sure to be distracting. The Eidolon Sector lies at the heart of the Eye of Terror, at the point where reality bleeds away into the formless tides of the Immaterium. Stronghold of the Despoiler, headwater of every Black Crusade, there is no mortal law here that is not imposed by cruelty, and no physical law beyond the whim of the Dark Gods. The Plague Planet, home of Mortarion and his Death Guard Traitor Legion. This is a world of 10,000 contagions, where skies weep with pus and seas teem with disease. Sortiaris is the current homeworld of the Thousand Suns Traitor Legion. Ringed by the screaming souls of the betrayed dead and blasted by the tides of the warp, it is a planet no sane man would tread without cause, or at least without a numberless army at his back. Oliensis, throne of decadence and bane of many a righteous soul, the world is a living perversion, a deathless monument to the pursuit of pleasure above all else. Though the world's origins are argued over by the Adepts of Terror, it is known that at least one Space Marine chapter met its demise on the Oliensis surface. Reports suggest that those who fall to Oliensis embrace are reborn as blasphemous mirrors of their prior selves, shackled to the will of Slanish. Drakasi, corn slaughter pit. Only the strongest survive the crucible of its arenas, and then only until the favor of the gods turns against them once more. Eidolon itself was once an Eldari world, but now lies shackled by the madness of chaos, with an empire dedicated to each of the chaos powers constantly vying with the others for dominance. It is said that there are more ways to die on Eidolon than anywhere else. Though as no one ever returns, this can be considered little more than rumor. Excellent news, Great One. Sortiarius lies within our grasp. Its resources are ours for the taking. We shall see if the Thousand Suns consider their home of greater import than their holdings in the webway. Order the fleet to stand in readiness. As you command, Great One. Strange. The Thousand Suns have responded to our provocation. And yet, they have not. Explain. They have moved several vessels into position, and yet, nothing. It is almost as if they were waiting for something. Then likely they are. We will destroy them all before their plans come to fruition. Such is my decree. A hundred years of study disrupted by the impertinence of ghosts. You shall pay dearly for this. By all means, seek your toll. But I fear you lack the resolve to do so. Foolish automaton. Your existence thus far has been mere annoyance. Now you have forced us to take notice. Your dynasty shall not long survive this day. We shall see.
exchange for fealty. What is your answer? The Void take you. This ship has brought ruin to 10,000 worlds. It shall not fall to your kind. I shall not fall to your kind. The expected answer. Very well. Za! We will bring this to its appointed conclusion. Reassembling coherence. system. Za, is the Dark Throne prepared? Almost. But translocation of so large a body through the webway is complex and requires delicate manipulation. We must secure the Cadian system so that the way can be prepared. Even a single degree of error could prove calamitous, and there will be no scope for a second attempt. The method of translocation will utterly destroy the section of webway we employ. Succeed or fail. An acceptable loss. If we meet with success. If not... I am aware of the price I will pay, Great One. I assure you, I would rather avoid that tithe. The Cadian Sector is amongst the most vital of the Imperium's defenses, guarding as it does the only known navigable route out of the Eye of Terror. So long as the Cadian Gate holds, the Imperium remains secure. After 10,000 years of defiance, Cadia finally fell during the opening stages of the 13th Black Crusade. Now, it is little more than an honored memory and an example to those who strive in the service of mankind. Father Nurgle, 
Fret not about thy lack of flesh, for I have agues to rust and rot all forms. A slow death to the interloper. His vessels bar our passage. I must reach the target coordinates, or this is all for nothing. Stay back, good servant. Your path shall be cleared of this detritus. How may I serve? Abaddon's gift to a valued ally. 
and it possesses all the firepower I need to avenge his death. I need no nothing more. Like all humankind, you see a pool and think it the ocean. This system, this quadrant of the galaxy is now mine. I offer you one chance to depart. You are not the first to underestimate me, machine. It is a mistake no one long survives. I know this weapon of old gravity that possesses the power to destroy even the Dark Throne. If left unchecked, then we shall take it from this horrible black heart. In the same moment we believe him of his petty life. Activate the throne. 